This is 4D with Demi Lovato. This podcast is all about having conversations that help us learn more about our world, each other, and ourselves. And that's a pursuit that our guest today knows intimately. Patricio Manuel is a professional boxer and groundbreaking transgender athlete. He is a five-time USA female national amateur boxing champion and made history in 2018 as the first transgender boxer to fight professionally in the United States. He is also the first U.S. boxer to ever fight as a woman and then as a man. Pat has been an inspiration to me in my own journey with gender and identity. His bravery in forging his own path and carving out a space for himself in a sport entrenched in traditional masculinity showed me that we don't have to adhere to what the world thinks a boxer or a pop star should be. We can just be ourselves and find success, peace, and love doing it. I'm so excited to welcome Pat Manuel to 4D with Demi Lovato. Stick around for our conversation. It starts here in a minute. Mental health is a lifelong journey. With Talkspace, you can match with a licensed therapist and send them unlimited messages. Get $100 your first month with code 4D at Talkspace.com or download the app. That's code 4D at Talkspace.com. Hello, I... I'm so excited to meet you, Pat. Hello. Very nice to meet you. Would you like to introduce yourself for the world? My name is Patricio Manuel, or Pat, also known in the boxing world as Cacahuate or Peanut, uh, because my head is so small, you may not notice it now, but it actually is very, very small. I am talking to you from Duarte, California, which is a uh, northeastern uh, part of Los Angeles County on what is Tongva land. And um, I am known uh, basically as, a, as the boxer. <laughs> I feel like that's what most people know me as, particularly the first uh, professional male boxer who is transgender to compete, uh, I think ever, as far as records have indicated. Amazing. I'm Demi. It is wonderful to meet you. Um, this is my podcast 4D. And basically, I wanted to talk to you about your journey and your story. I wanted to give you a chance to go a little bit more in depth in your story. I find your story so fascinating. I love the fighting world. And so I am thrilled to get to talk to someone that is a part of that world. But also, you know, I think what you've done for the trans community is incredible. You said that your life was an odyssey of gender. Can you explain that? If we, we look at the Odyssey, um, you know, as a story and think of um, Ulysses leaving his home, going on this huge journey, but eventually coming back to himself and to his family. I think that is really accurate to my own journey. Um, when I was little, I never saw myself as a girl. Never. There was wow. never a time in my life where I'm like, I am a girl. That, that never came out of my mouth. And I have a really distinct memory. I think I was nine years old, eight or nine years old. I was a little bit of a late bloomer with some dexterous stuff. And um, I was really late to tying my shoes. So that's why I, I distinctly remember this story. I had gone to the bathroom and I had figured out finally how to confidently tie my shoes. And I had also gotten some sort of sports watch that I was into and I had a no fear chain wallet. And for some reason, all these three things combined made me utter this statement in my head and I really remember it. And I didn't realize how important and integral this would be to my life story. But I remember saying, today I'm a man. Like, you know, I'm eight, nine years old and I said, today I'm a man. And that was without even knowing that there was a, a possibility of being trans. There were no trans men shown on um, media at the time. Mm -hmm. um, there were barely even trans women being shown and usually the depictions were really problematic. So I knew who I was without anyone telling me. And then throughout my life, shortly after that, I was taken to an all girl school, uh, which was really difficult for me. I now look back and it's funny, I was really popular at the school and I think the girls all sensed I was the one boy. Um, <laughs> but it was hard. And then to yeah. suddenly go back into a co-ed school and not know how to really interact with boys who I had always been the best of friends with, 
to then going into boxing and being like, okay, maybe if I can't become a man, I'll be comfortable with being masculine. And I don't think it's a coincidence that my first national tournament was when I cut all my hair off and I really leaned into my masculinity. And mm. I think I was the only publicly out uh, queer athlete during the women's Olympic boxing trials. I was always very upfront. And it was during the boxing trials when I had done everything to be a part of the first ever women's boxing um, games. And I injured my shoulder that had been an issue that I realized I needed to look beyond just who I was as an athlete. And I need to look at who I was as a full person. And I really remember that statement I said to myself as a child. So this whole journey, it hasn't been just about discovering myself. It's more about rediscovering who I knew I always was. How old were you when you came to that conclusion that you needed to do more self-discovery? I was a, a bit older. Um, so I was, I think, about 25, 26 uh, when I really had to look at and grapple with the fact that I was trans. And, you know, I had known I was gender nonconforming. Um, I known I was masculine for a really long time. Um, but I... I hadn't given myself the space to really say, oh, you're really trans. Like you're a trans mm -hmm. person, mainly because I was scared that I would lose the sport that I love so much. That yeah. was what kept me. And being so focused on doing the next tournament, going international, being on Team USA, trying to qualify, all of these were huge obstacles. And it didn't really allow for me to have the time to look at myself. And when that was all gone, I had to really, really look at what the bigger issue was and what was really missing in me. And what was missing was I wasn't being true to myself and I wasn't mm. being honest. And authenticity and honesty are my most important values. And to yeah. realize that every time I stepped into that ring, every time someone called me a female boxer or a woman boxer or she or her, that I was lying. I was lying to myself and I was lying to the rest of the world. And I realized I didn't want to move through that way in the world. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it sounds like you found your home in boxing, but at the same time, it was something that was holding you back from your authenticity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's a funny thing like that. It showed me who I was, but then I also was afraid to fully be that person, mainly because boxing had and for a lot of fighters, this isn't just my story. This is a super common story. The sport becomes your savior. It saves people. Boxing saved me. I wasn't, I wasn't doing anything. I saw no future in myself before I started boxing. And to suddenly realize that to make this choice to be myself, and that was the only choice that was involved. I want to make that clear. The only choice I made was that I wanted to be true to myself. I didn't have the choice of being trans. This is just who I am. But by making that choice, I worried that I possibly had to sacrifice something I really loved. And I was scared. If I'm completely honest, I'm not scared of many things, but I was really scared of having a life where I didn't get to be a boxer anymore. I can imagine. And I guess I did have this moment where I woke up after overdosing in the hospital and, and I didn't know if I'd be able to sing again and I had to really rethink my life and and I was 25 20 about to be 26 I was around the same age and I was going through that too where I had to rethink my life of like what is my life going to look like if I can't sing where did you look for like inspiration after your shoulder injury what were things that you turned to Unfortunately, some things that were not at first, not uh, very healthy. I'm, I'm going to be completely honest. Mm -hmm. uh, substance abuse definitely became an issue uh, mm -hmm. for me at the time, particularly alcohol. Um, I worked as a bouncer at a nightclub. It was really easy access. And I think even as I was grappling with who I was, it took me probably a couple more years for me to feel really grounded on my feet and be like, okay, this is who I am. And I want to be happy. I want to be happy. I want to be grounded and I want to be here. I think that's, that's something that I don't talk much about and not that I suffer from, uh, ideations or anything like that, mm -hmm. but I think especially as a black trans person, we don't see ourselves in the future. We don't see a future for ourselves. And I remember distinctly 
around 2015, really imagining what my life would look like as I got older. And I think that really helped ground me in my soul searching of like, I want a future. I want to mm. step towards that future and I want to craft that future. You reintroduced yourself to the world several years ago. What was that like? Were you met with a lot of support? Were there fears that came true in that process? What was it like for you? Yeah, you know, now it's been, let's see, it's oh, going on eight years since I had medically transitioned. And I feel like the, the narrative for trans people is to focus on our traumas and to focus on um, the pain that we experience. And for me, I want to pivot that around to really focus on the triumphs. So mm -hmm. I want to say that coming out, while yes, it was met with heartache and rejection, it also showed me who who really had my back. And it showed me most of all that I was a fighter more than just in the ring, that the personality mm -hmm. I carried in the ring to never back down from anyone also carried over into life. You know, this is a sport that puts you under the spotlight and mm -hmm. really will highlight everything about you. It will show, did you train as hard as you said? Did mm -hmm. you eat the way you said? Are you actually going to fight the way you did? You've been saying and talking about for so long. So I think this is a sport that really is about truth. So it made it easy for me to stand there and be like, this is who I am um, because I'm used to standing in front of the ring with one other person across from me who's trying to take my head off. And just knowing that I was willing to sacrifice everything for myself. And I think that's something that people lose in the story and they lose in the trans narrative for every person that comes out. They are making a declaration where they are centering their happiness and their self-identity before everything else. Because the consequences still in this world of coming out as trans mean that people are going to hate you. Literally people who do not know you are going to hate you, are going to say that who you are is wrong, saying that they know what's best for you more than you know for yourself. I think it takes a lot, um, it takes a lot for anyone to come out and say like, this, this narrative that you've given me, I reject it completely. And, you know, for me, I think because of that and because I'm in a sport that respects um, courage and respects heart, regardless of the gender, I have actually been really embraced. And I really want to focus on the fact that for every one person that rejected me or left me, 10 more came to have my back. Um, you know, I have a great team behind me. Uh, I was able to have my professional debut on Oscar de la Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions because Oscar de la Hoya and the president Eric Gomez said I deserved a fight and they made sure that I was showcased. Mm. During that fight, I had so many referees, coaches, fighters who I didn't even know who wanted to see me fight, who personally came up to give me respect and say, you deserve this. You deserve to have your chance. And I got the opportunity to really showcase who I am to the world. And that is such a privilege. Wow. That's so powerful that you want to put the focus on the triumphs. One of my favorite things about coming into my 20s is having found my family. It's not the family I was born with, but the family that I feel safe with out here that I can be myself with. You know, what what was that like for you and and did you find them? Yeah, community is so important. I think especially in a sport like boxing, you think oh, you're by yourself. But that is so far from the truth. This sport is very much a team effort. And my life has been a team effort. I'm really, really fortunate that I have had some really stellar friends who have known me for a really long time. And I'm also really lucky that my my big sister, who's uh, an amazing art curator um, in Pennsylvania at the ICA, she's also queer. You know, that also really helps when my, my best friend who I came into the world with um, is also a queer person who's in community with queer people. But I would say that the biggest turning point for me was in 2013, kind of when I was in that low point figuring out who I was, I was invited to a um, social justice cohort with Brown Boy Project, which brought me in community with a number of masculine, of center people of color and really connecting with people who were mirroring back my own stories and my own experience really helped me to figure out where I need to go forward. It was almost like looking at 
hints and clues, even if it didn't look exactly the way I was moving forward, I could see what was next for me. I was like, okay, medical transition mm-hmm. will be next. Getting deeper into that community and, and really um, feeling like I'm in a very reciprocal relationship. Most of the people I am really close to who are doing amazing things in the world, um, yeah, I mean, like even my partner is an amazing organizer in the world. So many people are literally, they're, they're in the, the front lines of the fight to make this world a better place. And I get to be there to support them uh, through my own lessons and things that I have learned. And in turn, they have supported me in my own journey. So I am very, very held in this world. So can you tell me a little bit about how you started out, what it was that made you turn to boxing? Yeah, so I have been boxing now for, uh, it is going on, it's over 20 years. So I've spent most of my life uh, in this sport. Very, very fortunate that boxing is what I came to. I I think that if I was younger now, I probably would have gone the MMA route uh, because what I was really attracted to when I was younger was the particularly the masculinity of fighters mostly like martial artists I was really really into Bruce Lee actually did Jeet Kune Do for a little bit um for a while which was his his martial art form and it was actually when I was uh, a teenager that I really started struggling is an, an understatement <laughs> um I feel like for people who don't really understand what gender dysphoria is it seems like something weird or that how could someone uh, feel so compelled to go against what is quote unquote their nature. But for me, my nature has always been, I saw myself as a boy who would grow into a man and my body didn't really cooperate with that. And as a result, I basically checked out. I felt like I was just watching myself go through the motions, um, especially when I was around 14, 15, 16. And in I look at now as a last ditch effort to really save myself. I turned back to the masculinity that I was really attracted to as a child and asked my grandma to uh, take me to a boxing lesson. She didn't even know at the time it was a really known famous boxing gym in downtown LA. It's now closed LA Boxing Club. And the first day I went in, I completely fell in love with the sport. Uh, I was terrible. I actually, I think I lost my first three fights in a row, but I showed up every day and I kept trying because it was something that just really pulled at my heart and it made me, it made me feel like me in a way I hadn't felt since I was a young child. And, you know, fast forward, eventually I got good at it. Um, eventually I stopped losing and I became a five time national amateur champion. I went to the Olympic boxing trials and when I lost everything, I lost my dream. I had worked really hard for it really forced me to look in at myself and be like, who really are you? Who are you beyond boxing? Who are you beyond just trying to win and trying to get to the Olympics and trying to get to the next level? Because as much as I love boxing, the sport ends. It always ends. And I didn't want to look back and have any regrets. And I realized that I needed to live my truth, a truth that I had kept for myself for a long time, but a truth I had known as long as I can remember that I'm a man. And I came out in 2013 and decided to medically transition. And for me, there was no way that I could walk through this world as a man and not also be a boxer. So I was not going to let the fact that no one had done it before me uh, stop me from living my life as on my own terms. Mm, wow, that's so powerful. I think that actually is what attracted me to the sport as well. For me, it was MMA, but I felt like I was embracing my masculine side when I was training. And I didn't, I don't know, I was able to step foot into my masculinity more. And that, yeah, you're right. Like, maybe that's why I was so attracted to the sport (laughs) (laughs) as well. That's so interesting. And I've never put that together. I found that when I started training, specifically for me, it was jujitsu, that Mm -hmm. I really found an immense amount of healing. Did you find boxing helped you on your healing journey? And how so? Yeah, boxing was huge on my healing journey. And a lot of the work that I consider my heart work is actually helping people mend the mind-body disconnect that happens Mm -hmm. to so many. Um, A lot of uh, people I have worked with over the years are survivors of so much trauma. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and the thing is, when our, our bodies become a place that is unsafe, it disconnects because the mind will do whatever it needs to to survive. And for me, I'm a body based person. So I always have to go and focus on that physical connection first. And as you know, with jujitsu, any sort of combat sport, you cannot afford to be separated from your body. There's yeah. dire consequences yes. if you do yeah. that. Broken you know? bones. <laughs> yeah. Me, it's like getting knocked out. You know, you, it's like getting your arm twist. So, so yeah. you know, that's a really quick way to suddenly go from like what I felt like I was watching myself go through the motions of life to, you know, first week I sparred and, you know, it definitely got beat up. I should not have been in there sparring, but I did. That's a real quick way to suddenly make myself present in my body when I've got a bloody mouth, you know, from it. So it really helped me um, reconnect with myself. I will say I have, I used to go to universities and to conferences and have conversations about mind body disconnect and using physical practices as a way to heal um, that, um, that fissure that happens um, to support Mm. people's mental and emotional healing. And I would have people coming up and crying being like, I didn't know how to put into words what was happening, but this is what has been happening to me for a long time. And I think this is a huge issue that people are going through. And sports is such a amazing vehicle to get reconnected with ourselves and to be a starting point. You know, I can't say like boxing healed everything for me. I had to do some alone time. I had some therapy. I had, you know, definitely some hard conversations with people had being holding myself accountable for bad behavior, all these Mm -hmm. things. But I don't think I can separate one thing and say that was the one thing that did it. But if I have one thing that was a starting point in my healing and mm-hmm. reconnecting with myself, it definitely was boxing. Oh, that's beautiful. Do you, do you ever have times now where you feel out of sync with your body and mind alignment? I still have moments. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a pretty integrated person. I have a lot of body awareness um, from now 20 years of of being a pretty high level athlete. But, you know, especially last year during during the quarantine, when we weren't able to box, I had another chance of being like, you need to sit with yourself, you need to sit with yourself. You don't have boxing as an excuse. Yes, you're doing work. But there are still things that are left that you have to work on. There are still things that have been brought up. There's still pain from the onslaught that I experienced from turning pro. I'm not going to say mm-hmm. that it's been a, a cakewalk. You know, I get threats from people. I have people who literally are saying that I don't exist. Um, they either switch between saying that I'm going to get knocked out, even though I consistently spar top pros out here, Or they say that I'm cheating. You know, it's, I've had to still grapple with that. And the fact that, unfortunately, gender dysphoria doesn't go away. It still has moments of sneaking back. I'm not going to, you know, sit on this podcast, you know, if there's a trans person who's also on here experiencing gender dysphoria and they think that there's an end site, that there's an end goal, that it's never going to happen again Mm -hmm. for them, it comes back because healing is never a finish line. It's yes. never an actual destination. It's, it's the journey itself is healing. So I definitely still have those moments where I can feel myself having to ground myself. I feel myself having to root back down. But I'm really lucky that I have learned uh, through so many years of my life the practices to be able to get back. And, and those practices, what do they include? Just for anybody that's listening who might need help realigning themselves um, and getting centered again. Yeah, definitely what's mine, which may not work for everyone, um, is shadow boxing. I movement helps a lot with me. Shadow boxing really helps ground me. Um, but what I do a lot with uh, clients and um, usually advice for people who are, you know, activists and organizers dealing with a lot of stress, I tell them to check in with their breath. Uh, that's mm. one of the ways that we can actually control our stress responses is by using our breath. Um, I like using cold water immersion that has always mm. helped with me. Uh, Using trigger point with um, tennis balls helps you become aware of the tensions that you're holding. Those are a lot of the things that I personally like to use. And I also think that 
happiness and joy is usually the best way to get recentered back on yourself. So whatever practice you have, whether that's dancing, whether that's singing, if that's even eating a piece of like cake that you really enjoy, whatever it is that makes you happy, being with a dog, touch all these things. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like having something that you know will always make you feel better, even if it's just for a slight moment, is probably the best thing you can do to feel present in yourself again. Yeah. Wow. The International Olympic Committee finally allowed transgender boxers to compete. How did that make you feel? I mean, I'm glad. I Listen, I never wanted to be the first and I definitely don't want to be the only one. I can't wait to see the next generations that because these doors have been opened by trans athletes like myself and other people before us, and there's so many other people involved in this um, effort to really open the doors. I look forward to seeing so much representation and seeing it not be the story, the story mm -hmm. that you're a trans athlete, instead yes. of being like, this is just another person. You know, boxing is full of so many amazing human interest stories. And mm -hmm. for it not to be distilled down to just the fact that you're trans. Yes. That's what I look forward to. Let all the boxers, whether they're trans or not, really show their full self. And I look forward to the day when they don't have to constantly worry about, are they going to have an opponent? Mm -hmm. Are they going to have to worry about people protesting against them? Are they going to have to worry about policies being made or their health care being restricted? Because so much of this world is scared of something that they do not understand when really at the truth of it, we're all just human and we're just trying to do the things that we love. There's no difference in that. I know it's happening. It's coming. I, I've had many trans athletes who are young, who have told me they're competing, they're involved in this, they are hell bent on getting to the Olympics. I look forward to the day that we see so many more trans athletes represented in the sports and being able to go to the highest level. So I'm like, it's coming. Whether people want yes. it or not, it is coming. I agree. I look forward to the day where there's so much representation that it doesn't feel like that's the only story. Mental health is a lifelong journey. With Talkspace, you can match with a licensed therapist and send them unlimited messages. Using Talkspace feels a little like having a therapist in your pocket. That's why being able to reach out anytime from anywhere makes taking care of my mental health super easy. I'm more relaxed when I'm traveling, knowing if I need to talk, I can just send a message from wherever I am. Working through things in therapy can be tough, but connecting with a therapist isn't. I wholeheartedly recommend Talkspace for therapy. You can sign up online and start therapy the same day as you sign up. You can text, video, or send voice messages to your licensed therapist so it's incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions from the comfort of your home. Talkspace is a fraction of the cost of in-person therapy. Instead of waiting for an appointment, you can send unlimited messages to your therapist 24-7 and they'll engage with you daily, five days a week. As a listener of this podcast, you'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com. Make sure to use the code 4D to get $100 off of your first month and show your support for the show. That's 4D and Talkspace.com. I wanted to go back to when you were saying about how boxing was kind of holding you back at, from living your full truth. I wanted to just relate to you a little bit because I know what it's like, basically, mm -hmm. to have your dream feel like it can hold you back. But it's quite the opposite. You know, now that I'm living my truth, my art has just become that much greater and because you know, my art is a reflection of who I am. So now that I'm able to be more transparent with the world and who I am, they can see my art better mm -hmm. and, and they hear it better. And so I wanted to, you know, tell you that I relate to that. I was so afraid at times of what my career would look like if I wasn't that super sexy, hyper feminine pop star. And my career, it doesn't matter as much to me now as it does living my truth. I will always believe um, that when we, we put ourselves into these boxes that the rest of the world uh, assumes we should be in. And I, I think this is everyone. I don't think there's one person that fits neatly into this box. Mm -hmm. um, 
we close ourselves off to our true selves and we also close ourselves off to the truth of other people. And what is so beautiful about this world is the diversity that we have. And once we're every person, I really firmly, truly believe if we all commit to fighting for a world where being yourself isn't seen as an act of bravery and we just are who we are, this world will be such a better place because totally. I'm sure you have felt this. I felt it for myself. Um, when I wasn't being true to myself, I wasn't my best person. Yes. I could not show up in the way that I wanted to. Yeah, I could box well, but in relationships and everything else in life, I, you know, I look back at who I was when I, before I transitioned and I'm like, I don't like that guy. I don't oh, like yeah. that person at all. Like, you know, not a terrible person, but who I am now and the way that I can show up for other people and the way that I can witness other people's truths and watch them grow and not have any sort of fear or like reaction to something that doesn't look like me. All that comes from the fact that I am really comfortable in myself. And I think that scares a lot of people. I think it really does. And I think we're seeing that in this moment where conversations about gender identity, where mm -hmm. we're seeing more kids transition earlier because they know it's possible or we're seeing people like yourself being like hey actually i'm non-binary you know i this label that you put me on isn't it's too narrow for who mm -hmm. i really truly am i think we're seeing the reaction um especially in so many policies that are happening right now particularly in sports where people are scared because then that means they're gonna have to lean in a little bit and be like oh who am i Mm -hmm. is these truths that I thought were the fundamental truths like I realized like they aren't they're not true mm -hmm. at all like I've been lied to and I bet they're going to go back and think about who they were as a little kid think about who they were until someone told them no you're wrong no you can't be that no do this I think when people look back and realize that wisdom doesn't only come with age but wisdom also comes in youth and mm -hmm. in being a child and having the freedom to really dream I think a lot of people are going to be sad that they have lived most of their lives denying who they really are. Wow. You just spit some real truth. <laughs> like I'd need a second, even though I feel comfortable with the identity that I, you know, have declared for myself today. Now, after hearing you say that, I'm thinking back to moments in my childhood where I'm like, where was it? in my childhood that I learned that I had to be feminine? Um, was it the beauty pageants that I started doing at seven years old or was it before that? Yeah, my mind's like <laughs> going back to all of that and it's, it's so interesting. And it does, it really does make you look at, at yourself. Yeah, and I hope you're really able to sit with and also hold that inner child of yours and be like, I'm sorry that someone couldn't really see the fullness of yourself and that, you know, lean into the fact that who we are as people is constantly changing. Our own identities change. You know, who I am today may not be who I am tomorrow. Who you are today may not be who you are tomorrow. And that's, that's an amazing thing about being human and being alive is like every day we have a chance to be someone new. Absolutely. I, I wanted to show you something. I keep the background of my phone as a picture of my like younger self with my older <laughs> self. And nice. it's, it's to remind myself of my inner child every day because mm -hmm. that is so important. There is so much wisdom that is learned in our youth that we forget about by the time we get older. Mm -hmm. My inner child is always slightly leading the way. Um, you know, I have said before, I think I look at my inner child as my moral compass. And it's something mm -hmm. I've really revisited uh, last year when I had to do some downtime and really reflected on you know, who had been leading me on this journey and also parts of my childhood self that I forgot. Mm -hmm. um, so I've always found going back to the things that made me happy when I was a kid still have a way of making me happy now. Yeah. You know, it's it's funny. It doesn't go away. Yeah. You know, it's simple things like I, I cannot do cartwheels or round offs like for years and years and years. And suddenly five years later, I can just still do it. And it still brings me joy because right. that's what made me happy as a kid. So I think trying to remember the times when you were happy and you didn't realize sometimes how terrible this world can be to people, mm -hmm. uh, can be really, really powerful way of reminding yourself who you are. 
Yeah. I actually, I have a trampoline in my backyard because <laughs> it's one of the best ways to put myself in a good mood. Mm -hmm. And and it does. It taps back into that inner child of mine that always used to love jumping on trampolines, but mm -hmm. I never had one as a kid. So I think that's why <laughs> I've, I've like always had one as an adult. I wanted to ask you, what does living in 4D mean to you? Ooh, living in 4D. I mean, it's hard for me to put into words because I'm like, I feel like so much of my life is about that. <laughs> um, you know, I feel like it's embracing all the parts of yourself. Uh, it's about embracing the things that you love. It's embracing the things that you like to show the world. And it's also embracing the things that you're scared to show the world. Mm -hmm. um, and even the things that you don't want to show the world. Because let's be honest, it's not... We don't always want to live with everything out front and center. Um, I think it's really honoring the fact that all of us are really complex beings. Um, mm -hmm. And no one person can be, be distilled down to just one sentence. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the thing that makes humanity so great is that we are so much more than just what the world sees us as. Mm -hmm. And the more that we can get to a point of when we see a person, not making assumptions, not assuming everything about them, because how can we not be so complex when every one of us has a completely different story? And mm -hmm. I want to hear us all have the opportunity to share our stories without blowback or negativity or someone saying no that's not true when literally it's not their right to say who another person is yeah it's nobody's position or place to decide what someone else's truth is mm -hmm. i just want to say thank you so much again for coming on here and talking to me it was an honor to talk to you and have this conversation with you so um thank you so much and it was awesome meeting you. It was so great meeting you as well. And I just want to say congrats on really honoring your full self and being able to step out and, and you know, really honor who you were as a child too. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's really sweet. All right. Take care. Bye.